Create a better experience for your guests, get better reviews, become a super host, make more money. That's exactly what we're talking about today with Alan Quivas on the Field Flipping Podcast. Make sure that you rate and review so that you can get mentioned on our show. Let's get to it. If you want financial freedom, time freedom, and want to leave a legacy for generations to come, you probably have heard real estate investing is the place to do that. How do you get started? What do you have to do? When's the right time? If you are looking for those answers, you've come to the right place. My name is Kyle Stanley and this is Fearless Flipping. My mission is to help you learn this business and conquer real estate investing. Hey guys, welcome into the show. You're listening to the Fearless Flipping Podcast with me, Kyle Stanley, and I'm excited for you to listen in today with Alan Quavos, a good friend of mine in Airbnb. He has over 40 listings right now in Airbnb. At one point had over 60. Uh, so the guy is pulling in major, major money. But in order to continue to have success, you have to have raving fans. And that's exactly what Alan has created. Creates a great guest experience, which has been uh, the opportunity for him to grow and grow and grow and make more money, which is you know what it's all about. We want to make more money. We want to create better situations for the guests. And that's what we're talking about today on the Fearless Flipping Podcast. But before we get into that, two quick things. Number one, have you downloaded our Airbnb Profit Calculator? All you have to do is go to fearlessflipping.com and you can download it right there on the homepage. If, if you haven't done it yet, you need to because we're getting great feedback from the people that have been using it. And we would love to be able to hear from you if you have any sort of suggestions too. Just go to um, email me at kyle at fearlessflipping.com. And we would love to hear your feedback. And then the next thing is we want to give a shout out to Dean Rogers and the Home Helpers Group. They just mentioned us in a comment on YouTube. It was a video called Airbnb Rental Arbitrage, a landlord's best option. And that was posted February 20th. Uh, landlords, Airbnb is not scary. And Dean commented there saying, great info, very helpful, Kyle. Thank you, Dean, for that uh, response. So again, guys, if you comment, and share something positive, um, if you share an experience, if you share a story, and if you rate and review us, we will mention you on the show. So make sure to do that. And without further ado, let's jump into it with Alan Quavos, who's going to be talking about how to create raving fans in your Airbnbs. Hey, welcome into another episode of the Fearless Flipping Podcast. I'm Kyle Stanley here with Alan Quavas from Budapest, Hungary. We are on two completely opposite ends of the world and time zones, but Alan is making time late at night. I'm making time here early in the morning. We are excited to bring you some amazing information from a guy that has built a 50 plus unit business in Airbnb. So Alan, thanks for being with us, man. Yeah. Hey, Cal. It's good to be here. Thanks for uh, having me on, uh, on your show. Absolutely. So, you know, you and I are just talking a little bit about what's the uh, craziest Airbnb story. We had one that probably shouldn't be spoken out loud. So we're going to ask for yes. what's that? What's the other one? Tell us about your your most interesting or um, just, you know, really something uh, of a story that will help our audience to um, hear a little bit about your business. Well, yeah, the other one, unfortunately, I can't share. It's a little bit, um, it's not family friendly. It is funny. <laughs> it's not, it's not something crazy. No one died or anything, but it's, it's not family friendly. Um, but there is uh, one experience which I always remember. And um, that is um, when I had, I think I had around uh, eight units at the time and there was a, a couple from England that came to stay with us and she booked an apartment and uh, yeah, she stayed for like two or three nights and um, you know, they were a really nice couple and they said, uh, you know, we, you've got some other apartments. We've seen you've got some other apartments on Airbnb. Can we come and take a look at them? And I was like, sure. I just, I got some new ones that just opened up. Let's, let's go take a look. So I gave them a tour. And for some reason, this woman, she just fell in love with this one unit that we have. And um, it's not my favorite unit, um, but she just totally fell in love with it. And uh, she was like, oh, my God, I, uh, next time I'm here, I'm going to have to book this because, you know, she was coming for like dental treatments and stuff. And then she said, uh, I, I need to book this one. This is this is mine. This is this feels like home for me. And I was like, cool, no worries. And then, uh, you know, before she came back, like when, when I knew she was coming back, which was like I don't know, three or four months later, I decided to call her because it was, it was like a suite. So it was like four units in one kind of block. Okay. And, and there was just like, it was like a suite. And so I asked my, um, my assistant just to go get print out one of these signs, which was, I think it was like six bucks or seven bucks or something that you get at a, at a key makers, you know, just like a plastic sign. Right. 
and, and I put on the, her name's Renata and I put, I said, put on the, the sign onto the, onto the, um, on the door and put Renata suite on the door. So when she arrives and, and then like it's on the door and she turned up with her husband and then uh, she was like kind of checking in, I was checking her in. And then I said, Oh, I've got a bit of a surprise for you. Um, since you love this, this room so much, um, we decided to name it after you and here it is. And I showed her the, the door and she was, she was like almost like in tears. She was oh like, Oh my gosh. Oh my God, this like, and yeah, she was just so overwhelmed that it was just such a, such a personal thing to her. And to this day, she still stays, but she's coming to stay with us actually in, in a few days. And she sent us so much business just from that one gesture. Um, six or $7 investment. Yeah. Like yeah. six bucks. Like you would, like you'd never get that kind of repeat, repeat business from spending money on ads or marketing and stuff. And it was just a, you know, if you do something really personal, I mean, she sent, she, she comes back a lot and she's sent us a lot of business as well. That's amazing. Um, so nice. yeah, that's, that's, this one story I always love to tell. So well, I, I think that ties in so well with what we're going to be talking about today. We're really going to be focusing on, for those of you that are listening or watching a uh, guest experience, how to not just giving people a place to stay, but giving them an experience, letting them leave going. Now that place is somewhere that I would come back to again. And Alan is a master at that. And we're going to get into that in a little bit, but Alan's been doing this business for the exact same amount of time I have, five years. But uh, the thing about Alan is he found out very early on what the opportunity was. It took me quite a while, Alan, and I can see exactly where you're at. And that's where I want my business to be. So I'm excited for our audience, but a little selfishly, I'm excited to learn from you today as well. Um, so I'm just wanting to hear, take us back to five years ago, what attracted you to Airbnb and just kind of, you know, bring us up to date on your story of even who you were before Airbnb as well. So I, uh, I totally fell into it by accident. It was like, I'd never, I mean, if somebody had told me like five years ago, you'd be running like 50 units and have a team of people and this would be your business and that's, and you'd be living in Budapest, Hungary. I'd be like, yeah, well, what do you, what's that? What's Airbnb? What's, <laughs> you know, what are you talking about? You know, um, cause I, like at that time I was, uh, um, I was teaching English. Um, so my day job was teaching English. I was heavily into, into music. I was doing a lot of music production. Um, I had like this band cave with all my guitars and everything. And where were you? And I was like, time? I was in Budapest. So I was living in Budapest and I was living in this, in this flat. And, um, for me at that time, it was all about, um, yeah, becoming a musician, like doing music production and, 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 you know, I was doing a lot of that and just teaching English on the side, uh, or actually teaching English full time and doing the music on the side. And then, um, I was living in this, this apartment with, uh, with my ex and, um, she, it didn't work out. We, we split up. Uh, so she moved back to her home country and I was left with this flat and it was a beautiful flat. It was like a, big hundred square meter, uh, two bedroom designer flat. Uh, it was really bright. It was white. The furniture was like beautiful. And, um, so I was left in this flat and I was like, oh, you know, what am I going to do? I'm in, I'm in Hungary. Um, I don't speak the language here. Um, English teaching is not like, you know, I didn't really see myself as, you know, having a career in teaching English. I am, I'm only teaching English cause that's, that's all I can do here because I speak English. <laughs> um, and um, so, yeah, I was like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? And I almost, I almost moved back home to Australia. I was like, maybe I should just move home. And then, I don't know, yeah, just go home and start again. And who knows, like, you know, but then something was just telling me, something was like, nah, you've, you know, you've, you've been in Europe for like eight years. You know, there's, there's a reason you're here that you came here and, it just doesn't feel right to leave right now. So I was like, right, I'm going to stay. So I just, number one, I decided I'm going to stay. And number two was like, how am I going to make some extra cash? Cause like teaching English is, it's so irregular. Um, I was like, I, I need some extra cash. So what I did was I offered the landlord. Um, he's a good friend of mine now. Uh, he lives in Egypt. And I said, look, um, I think, I could manage this for you on Airbnb and I think I could maybe earn you this much money, which is 50% more than what you would earn on long term. Um, so I, I was the first business plan I ever put together, first business proposal I'd ever put together. 
And you and came up I, with this on your own or did you? I just came up, just wow. came up with it on my own. I was like, wow. this is what I want to do. And I, I, I think I can, I can earn you this much. And I sent him the email and he was like, I'm really interested. Next time I'm in Budapest, um, let's sit down for coffee and let's talk about it. Um, so what I did was I went on to Airbnb. Um, I'd stayed in Airbnbs um, before. And there was no air DNA. There was no, there right. was nothing like at that time. I mean, there was, there wasn't even any channel managers like, like now you like the people out there now who are starting, it's never been easy now actually to start doing Airbnb because you've got so many tools and it's training available. It's incredible. The, the ecosystem has just developed so much. When I started, there was nothing, man. And, um, so there was no DNA. So I just was like, right, I'm going to go onto Airbnb. I'm going to look on the map and I'm going to look at what prices people are charging for this type of apartment. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I was scraping data for Airbnb, from Airbnb and I was like looking around and I, I was like, okay, looking at prices in this area and that area. And then I just, I just ran some basic numbers. I made some assumptions that, okay, maybe it would be like 50 to 60% occupied. I could charge forty dollars and forty euros a night, um, and then I did all these calculations, and then I said, "This is how much you'll get on long term. This is how much I think you'll get if I do this on Airbnb, and after taking my fees, which will be twenty percent, and this is how much I think I'll get." And then, yeah, he came to Budapest, and we sat down, and he was like, "Yeah, let's do it, man. I, I, wow, I believe in you. I trust you. Let's do it." And that was my first client, and. Um, we become like really good friends and um that was how i got my first property that's how i started that's amazing um, now yeah. fast forward to today with over 50 units are they all ones that you're managing or are any of those ones that either you own or that you um you know own the the lease and you're furnishing uh for like a rental arbitrage model yeah so we do 70 percent management Perfect. and 30 percent arbitrage Okay. Um, nothing owned yet. I'm actually looking for something uh, to buy, but the market's not, the market's like peaked because two or three years ago, everybody realized that Budapest was a hot market. So that like, like a whole bunch of people came in, Russians, Chinese, Israelis, even the Hungarians, they jumped on afterwards and they were like, everybody just started buying properties and the property prices like doubled almost tripled in some areas um so it's just not a good time to buy now because mm -hmm. the yields aren't the, the yields aren't there if you're paying this high price now the yield isn't there so but like three three four years ago i mean people could you could get like if you manage it yourself you could get like 20 to 25 percent yield with a manager you could get like yeah 12 13 percent yield like totally passive not doing any work yeah, that's so, amazing yeah, yeah. So let, let's talk about this really quick before we get into really what we want to discuss with guest experience. I'm always really interested to hear what people think about managing versus arbitraging. And you said you have about a 70, 30 split there. Do you do that because that's what clients are coming in or do you do that because of a different reason? Do you see more value in managing versus arbitraging? I just want to kind of hear your mindset on that um it's actually been because um that's how we started we started out with management and <clears throat> we could actually i mean there's no reason why we couldn't go 50 50 let's say a half the units arbitrage half management the reason why i don't really go for arbitrage is the market here it's difficult to find good deals so early on like i think it was like my third or fourth unit um, we did arbitrage there and th those units didn't work. Um, so you really have to be careful with arbitrage. You like for me in this market, it really depends on your market, but for my market, I'm looking to get, let's say three times revenue versus the rent. So if the mm -hmm. rent is 500 euros, I want to get minimum, uh, average 1500 euros in uh, revenue for that unit. If, if it's, if it's anything less than that, it's, it's just not worth it. There's too much, there's not enough buffer. And then if you have like a bad two or three months during the winter season, there's no bookings. Uh, it's, it kills your cash flow right. and it's, it's not right. good. So um, I am actually looking to get into buildings now. Like um, I've got friends actually who 
who run like 180 apartments, if you can believe that. He has like one of my good friends here. He's been in it 10, 10 years. And uh, for me, that's the next stage. So I'm, I'm, I, we still take in management units, but it's not where I focus my energy. I, I kind of want to focus on getting investors in and then going after a building with like 30, 40 units. So it's like a different, a different ball game. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I myself am getting ready to manage my first couple over here. And I, I really like the, the model because you're not taking on the risk and you're also, I mean, you know, aside from putting it on your profile for Airbnb and risking your reviews, um, more so the financial risk. And you're also not taking on um, all the, you know, putting forward the money for the furniture, for the amenities, all that kind of stuff. You're basically just completely, and when you have this all automated, it really is a very passive uh, version of cash flow. Is that how you see it? Yeah, I would say co-hosting, like managing other people's properties is definitely lower risk. Um, we often prefer that model with owners. Like a lot of owners come to us. We actually turn away quite a few units because the owners come to us and say, um, um, I do this on Airbnb, but I don't want to deal with it anymore. And I, I don't want to like a manager, like a percentage split. How about you just pay a fixed rent? And then, and we have to turn those units down because it's like, look, that's too much risk on our side. The, the rent's not equal to, you know, this, this three times revenue kind of uh, ratio. So we turn them away, but um, definitely I would recommend in the beginning, just get into co-hosting because it's just, it's like virtually like zero risk. I mean, mm -hmm. you have a bad month, you just get a smaller share. If in arbitrage, if you have a bad month, you, you got to fork money. out the cat. Yeah. You yeah. lose money. Um, so that's how I started in the beginning and um, co-hosting mostly. And it's a really, really good way to grow your business without taking on too much risk. Awesome. Later on, when you get to like 50, it's a little bit different because you're managing like, you know, 50 different hotel owners, but that's, that's a whole different thing. So, well, and we're not going to get into your business model right now, uh, but I want to encourage people. Uh, our mutual friend, Julian Sage, did a great podcast with you, uh, short-term rental success stories. Uh, you can also Google just short-term Sage to find him. Um, I want to encourage people to go listen to that podcast as well, because you really break down all the teammates, the way that your business is running. And that was in itself very helpful for me too. So if any of you are out there and thinking about, Hey, I've got one listing and I want to turn that into five to 10, you're going to need to really tighten up your systems and your teammates. And Alan talks about that on uh, Julian's podcast, but I want to get into the fun part with our podcast, which is guest experience. You are doing, as we heard in that very first story, some really cool things that are not necessarily a lot of extra work on your end, but are creating some amazing experiences for your guests and getting you those five-star reviews and repeat business just like everyone dreams of. So let's just talk about why you want to give that experience and how you're doing that. So let's talk about the why and the how, if you can, just kind of dive in deep here. Well, I mean, I, I wanted to give people an experience um, because that's what I want. You know, I wanted people to, to walk away and go, you know, I really love that. Like, I, I'm going to remember this. And we try to, we, we really try to kind of um, uh, work this way, like, you know, making sure that people walk away and go, you know, that was that was better than staying in a hotel or that was better than anywhere else I've stayed. And we've had guests say, say that to us. We've had guests say like, um, you know, we traveled. I just love when getting messages like that. When you get, have a guest and they review, they leave a review and they say, we traveled for two to three weeks around Europe. And this was by far the most outstanding place we stayed. We loved the team. We loved the whole experience. And, um, yeah, this was the best part of our trip. You know, when you get a message like that, it, it's like, yeah, this is what we're doing it for. And um, I think it's important that you give guests an experience because otherwise it's just, you know, a commodity. It's like, you don't, I, I always tell this to the owners as well. Like when we get a, a new owner and, and they're like, oh, I'm not really willing to spend money on getting a new bed and stuff, but you have to try and explain to them, like, you're not giving people a place to sleep you're giving them an experience so that they 
when they arrive, they feel like relaxed and at home and they, they can just let all their kind of worries like drift away. You know, they, they don't have to worry about anything and they just feel like, yeah, I'm home. Like, you know, this is going to be my home for the next three or four days and they're going to want to come back and just and chill and enjoy the place, you know? Um, so I think guest experience, especially these days is so important um, because, you know, yes, it's an alternative to hotels, but hotels have all those extra services. Mm -hmm. They have all those in-house services like in you know, dining and, and concierge and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, people do choose um, short-term rentals because of the privacy and the space and everything. But also if you can do something personal and you can get some great reviews, um, you know, it's all about the reviews, it's all about the reviews. So, you know, once you get some, some amazing reviews, then you, you're going to, you're going to bump your listing and, and people are going to see those reviews. And then, it, you know, you're going to build trust, um, with, you know, on those platforms, Airbnb, booking.com, et cetera. Um, and it's going to, it's going to be good for your business. You're going to generate more business. Um, and that's what it is. You're like great hospitality will create more business. Absolutely. Hey, Fearless Flipping community, we are taking a quick break from the podcast to talk about Airbnb. For those of you that don't know, I have built much of my residual income around Airbnb, despite a lot of other investors being really excited about long-term renters, I was not. I saw an opportunity with Airbnb to get to my goals faster, to get more cash flow, and to pay off my houses quicker too. So instead of being really happy like a lot of other investors are with 200 to 300 dollars of cash flow every single month i've turned my renters and rentals into over a thousand dollars on average of cash flow every single month so if you want to learn more about airbnb my systems um, where I pick my Airbnbs, how I communicate with guests. Maybe you've already got Airbnb as a business on the side right now, but you wanna take it to the next level. I am absolutely here to help you. You can book a free consultation with me about Airbnb. Learn more by booking at fearlessflipping.com forward slash consultation, and you get me for 30 minutes for free. That's right, 30 minutes absolutely free. That's once again, fearlessflipping.com forward slash consultation and I'm looking forward to helping you conquer Airbnb investing. So in the beginning when you had just a few listings or a lot less than 50, <laughs> what were ways that you were uh, creating this experience and putting that personal touch uh, in with your guests? Um, so in the beginning it was just me, like I didn't have any other people and like I did whatever I could to um, just make them feel more welcome. Like I remember there was, a, there was, a, there was another Scottish couple. I, I went a bit crazy in the beginning because I really wanted people to walk away and just be like, wow. But then I figured out yeah, you can tone it down a bit. You don't need to do it that much because it, it's not going to make that much of a difference. So mm -hmm. I, I did things like I, I, <laughs> I got like hot rolls, hot like cheese rolls, and I put them in the oven because I wanted them to have that experience, that smell, like when they walk in, like something freshly baked. You wow. know? And <laughs> that, that, that was my level of thinking. And, I, and um, I figured out in the end, like, you know, I can't do this every time there's a guest check-in. Right. It's nice to do it once. Um, things like there was, there's like Christmas, and when you have a few units, you can do it. You can put a Christmas tree in like in, in two or three units. You can't do it units it's, it's ridiculous you just can't um but I, I wanted people to have a premium experience so we still do this today there's one easy thing you can do is just have like premium coffee so here in europe like nespresso is very popular mm -hmm. um so we have we make it as a require we have it as a requirement for our owners to purchase a, an espresso machine and we have like nespresso pods and so they can come in and they go yeah okay i can get like like freshly brewed like premium coffee in the apartment like, you know, during my stay. So I, I did that, like we, we still do that today. Um, I used to put in like a full complimentary mini bar and I had to pull that down back a bit because things were just being wasted. Yeah. <laughs> um, like I'm talking like full. So I, I got this idea, actually I stayed in a hotel and it was so cool. They, they had a free mini bar and I realized why they did it because in a hotel you can, like when you're managing properties all over the place, the logistics just don't allow it. Um, you have to tone it down a little bit. You can do it, but you have to do it on a, on a smaller scale. Mm -hmm. um, so, but in the beginning, what I did was I'd have like a full range of stuff. Like there would be like two types of chocolate bars, 
two types of beers because I'm, I'm a beer drinker. I love beer. I was like, I'm going to have like a boutique beer and then like a Heineken, you know, and then a can of Coke, Sprites and chips and snacks and pretzels. So you would, you'd open the fridge and you would be like, holy shit, this is awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> right. like people would just be like, this, that's fucking incredible. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it is. And, and, and people, but I realized after a while, uh, people weren't really writing reviews about that. You know, right. they, like a few people would. Um, but when you, when you look at the numbers over time, you mm -hmm. realize like they just want something super clean, right. um, meticulously clean. That's the most important thing. And if you can add like a few things which are easy to add, like a bottle of wine, mm -hmm. uh, a few snacks on arrival, um, uh, that, that's good. Like we still do that. Yeah. Um, back in those days, if you gave a bottle of wine, other hosts would be like, oh, yeah, that's, that's a lot. You give them like a bottle of wine. Like now everybody does it. You look on the Airbnb pictures, there's a bottle of wine with two glasses. It's just like, generic standard now so these right. days if you want to do something special you really have to do something which is out of the you know other people aren't doing like yeah. all of this stuff is like standard now so you know one thing that we were doing a lot of um was leaving the chocolates on the bed you know the mints and yep. so as you know as you create systems and you start to have people on your team you want to make it easy for everyone and so we were like well you know having our maids go and carry around these chocolates, especially in a hot car in Fresno in the middle of the summer is not exactly duplicatable. Um, and so we started putting them in the fridge. Well, now you get all these people that are getting, you know, the last minute discounts and coming in and, you know, kind of those, uh, I guess you can call them uh, like leeches. They just suck out all the stuff that's in your, your Airbnb because they just they, you know, they get all the toilet paper, all the extras. Well, they started stealing all the chocolates too. And I'm like, well, we're not even getting reviews on this. We're not getting like yeah. the, Hey, this, this chocolate on the bed was really nice. So what we decided to do, and I don't know if you're doing this, I'm bringing this up because I want to know if you're doing anything similar to this, uh, Alan, but we started uh, doing a whiteboard on the, just right as soon as they walk in, they see the whiteboard and it says, welcome Alan and group, uh, enjoy your five-star experience. And we just have our maid basically put the name of the person uh, that is going to be coming in. And what we've seen is people erasing it and writing down their like little touch, like, thanks so much for a great stay. It was amazing. And now we're getting this like engagement with our guests, which has been really incredible to see. And in the, you know, in the whole scheme of things, we're seeing a lot more five-star reviews too. So are you doing anything similar to that or something? That's uh, we, we were in the beginning, but we, we, we don't do that anymore either. Um, just at, at scale, it's, it's difficult to do that um, mm -hmm. at scale. But um, I remember we, we do used to do that. We used to leave like notes and we do do uh, like birthday cards. So that's, that's, a, that's a really easy one, a good one to do. So if we know um, that somebody has a birthday and usually I guess tell us, they say I'm coming for my, my boyfriend's birthday. Um, we do leave a bottle of um, sparkling wine, not champagne, but some local hum, good uh, Hungarian sparkling wine. And a birthday card saying like happy birthday from the oasis team um and we still do that to this day so that's a nice little thing you can do which is personal and i think that people do appreciate it and <clears throat> we do get guest messaging and saying oh thanks so much for doing that it was really nice and personal and yeah we appreciate that so yeah. that's cool now what about partnering uh with local restaurants or wineries or breweries or anything like that uh, to get discounts or anything along those lines. Have you ever tried to do that? Do you um, know anyone that's doing things like that? I, I've always felt like that would be a really cool thing to add in, uh, especially for the experience of the guests that are coming in and don't really know the area. And now you get to you know make it a win-win, give them a discount and drive some business to a local uh, business. Have you done anything like that? Uh, yes, we do actually like Budapest is, <clears throat> it's quite an urban city It's very small, but it's, it's very urban. So there's so many choices around. Um, but we actually work with, it, it's very common here actually to work with like, um, partners, like, like business partners who like tour guides and all that kind of stuff. And the way it normally works here is rather than give a discount, <clears throat> you send them people and they give you like a referral fee. Cool. Um, so we do that with like airport transfers. Um, we, we work with a really good company and that is, is a really great guest experience because, you know, it's, it's like door to door. Mm -hmm. um, it cuts out the whole the confusion of getting on public transport, finding, you know, or, or so we arrange a transfer for the guests. We, re, we arrange 
the, the, re the return transfer. Um, there's stuff here like these old Roman thermal baths or built by the Romans and the Turks, um, these thermal spring baths and there's, uh, we provide tickets for the guests. So we do, we do right. do that kind of stuff. We do. And I highly recommend that you do that as well. It's just a good way to, um, most of it goes to our team, but like, you know, you, you can get some referrals and commissions from them. And plus it takes the guests, you know, it's kind of like a concierge service for the guests. Mm -hmm. So it takes, saves them time having to figure it out. And, you know, they, they trust you as well. So they're not going to get like, they don't think they're going to get scammed or anything. You know, they, sometimes you go to cities and you know, there's like vendors and they're charging you like twice as much for the same ticket. Whereas like we've got an official ticket. We can also give you a discount as well. So we do like discount discounted tickets as well, whilst earning a little bit for us on the side. So yeah, it's a really Great. good thing well, to do. What I love about that is you're create you're vertically vertically integrating your business. You're creating more streams of income, but at the same time, like you said earlier, people want that hotel experience as well, where they know they can have you know meal services, concierge services, transportation services, and you're not necessarily creating that side of the business. You're outsourcing that and getting those referral fees. It's a win-win all the way around. So I, yeah. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So we're kind of, you know, getting short on time here. I want to give you some time to be able to tell people how to connect. But before I do, is there one or two things that either we did or did not talk about that if I'm getting ready to start adding more guest experience to either a listing that I have or a listing that I'm thinking about starting What's a good place to start that's going to get people the best either return on their investment or return on their time uh, for giving the guests a great experience? So you mean like uh, like what's what other services they could offer the guests? Or? Well, yeah, whether we've talked about it already or not, like you mentioned the wine, uh, you mentioned you know some of the the um, the bar uh, with the beers and all that kind <laughs> yeah. of stuff. You know, if there's one thing for that you'd want to give advice to our listeners on a guest experience that they can do that's going to be the best return for them for reviews and for their time what would be that one thing that you recommend that they do uh, for guest experience um i think definitely the birthday thing helps so if you know people that that makes it personal like like anything you know like doing um i always tell this to to the team as well it's like if you know they're coming there for a specific reason, like for a wedding, or you know something personal about the guests, uh, that, that class, that example that I told you in the beginning, you know, printing out that, that sign, I mean, the investment is, is, it was like $6, but we probably generated, who knows, like $20,000 business out of that over the past three years because of the repeat business and because she always sends her friends. You know, so it's things like that. Like, yes, it's nice to have like wine and, um, and like local beers and all, all that kind of to, to, to enhance the experience and having coffee and all that. But the, the really the most important thing is if you know something about the guest that's personal, um, that goes a hundred times further than, than giving them a, like a kind of generic bottle of wine. Mm. Sorry to use the word generic, but it has become generic now. Just say, hey, here's a bottle of wine. Oh, nice. Like, I mean, everybody does it now. Yeah. Um, and I'll give you an example with this, this guest. You know, it started off with that sign. But we know that she she loves um, like lilies. I think it's like white lilies. She always drinks Earl Grey tea, and she loves she she needs to have fresh milk in the fridge. And we always make sure like like the, the, everybody knows about this the, these people like <laughs> they're like famous within the within the team. And it's like oh they're they're coming again. Renata and her husband are coming again. Okay, let's make sure the tea's there, the fresh milk and flowers. Like we wow. make sure that that's always there because she she always feels like you know, it, it's like her place. She comes there, she stays and she's like, oh my, like, oh my stuff, the, the team have put the stuff out for me. So this is something like really, really personal. I'll give you one more example. Um, I don't recommend doing this all the time because it can get really costly. But um, uh, there was one young couple that stayed with us, I think three years ago, three years back. And they wrote to the team and they said, we want to go to the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert um you know do you know where we can get tickets um and so the team found a website they said like yeah, here's the tickets you can buy them secondhand um yeah and then, and then the guests wrote back and they said oh guys we really really appreciate it but we didn't think it was going to be that expensive um i think it was i think it was around 
hundred bucks, something like that for two tickets. Um, we didn't think it was going to be that expensive, really appreciate it, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll just leave it. So I asked the team, I was like, guys, how much does the tickets cost? Sounds like they really, really want to go. Um, and they were like, yeah, it's going to be like 25,000, 30,000 florins, which is around a hundred bucks. I said, look, take it out of the pay cash, just buy them the fucking tickets. <laughs> and they, the staff were like, what are you, are you crazy? Like that's, you can't do that. It's like, it's like a hundred bucks. Like, Guys, just trust me, just do it. Just, just do it. Um, go pick up the tickets, write to them and say you've got a surprise for them and wow. then drop the tickets off at the door. We didn't hear anything from them that night, the next night. And the whole team, we were like, see, we told you you shouldn't have done it. They didn't even care. Yeah. Away. Like, you know, you could have given me the tickets, whatever. <laughs> um, but on the last day on the checkout, they had a handwritten note and they were like, we cannot thank you enough. We've been traveling for two weeks and honestly, we've been all around Europe and this was like the best part of our trip. Like we're always going to remember this. Oh and God. you know, just to give something, just give that experience to somebody like it's not about like expecting anything returned, but I can guarantee you if they're going to come back to Budapest again, or if, if, if their friends are going to come to Budapest, mm -hmm. who are they going to mention? They're going to oh, mention yeah. us. Oh yeah. And that's what it's about. So I think try, the key to do, thing, try to do stuff personal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the key thing that you just said there that as I continue to not only be an Airbnb, but be around other entrepreneurs, other like-minded people, it's this idea of giving without expecting anything in return that really does come back to um, pay off whether you expect it or not. And yeah. that's, we can all tell that you're doing that with your business, with your guest experience and uh, just an honor to be able to hear some of those firsthand stories from you today, Alan. So you've got a awesome Facebook group. That's how you and I connected. You joined my Facebook group. Yep. And so I uh, want to be able to give it an opportunity for you to get connected with our listeners. Can you just kind of uh, tell people about that Facebook group and anything else going on um, that you'd like your, uh, our audience to know about? Yeah, so uh, I've got a free Facebook group. Uh, it's called the Airbnb Empire Academy. Um, you just search for it on Facebook. Um, welcome to join. Uh, there's going to be um, some training in there for, for people starting out. Um, you can ask questions in there. I try to help people out to get them to the next level. Um, and then if you are at the kind of the next level, you've got like the, the 10 or 20 units. If you get to that stage and you really want to learn how to build a company and develop the right mindset and put in the systems and the structure and all that kind of stuff. And I've got an advanced program um, for, for people who want to go through that, through that kind of training and build a business and, and go 50 up to 50 units and, and beyond. Um, but join the face, the free um, Facebook group. Um, are going to be like lives and stuff. So try to give a lot of value because I know, um, you know, I didn't have any help when I started out. So if I can help other people, it'd be great. Perfect. So, and that's just Airbnb Empire Academy. Yeah. Perfect. We'll have a link to that in the show notes too. Uh, Alan, just amazing information, amazing tips. You really helped everyone conquer Airbnb investing today. And I just want to thank you again for being on the show. Awesome, man. Thanks, Kyle. Really appreciate you having me on. Okay. Show notes for that one. Fuelsflipping.com forward slash Alan Quivas. That's A-L-L-A-N-C-U-E-V-A-S. If you are watching on the YouTube channel, all you have to do is go down to the description and you can click on show notes. And if you're listening on the podcast, let me give that spelling for you one more time. A-L-L-A-N-C-U-E-V-A-S. Well, now you know how to go out there and conquer Airbnb investing by creating raving fans. Take those tips to heart. Go do it. And we will see you next time on the Fearless Living Podcast.